Hey everybody! In today's video, I am going to show you one of my favorite things in the world to do, which is mail art. As a person who still thinks Griffin and Sabine is one of the best books ever written, I could not love this month's kit more than I do. So I will show you what's in it. First of all, my very favorite markers, Kareen markers, these are the metallics, are included in this month's kit, which that is a huge win. And the kit is Happy Mail themed. Is there anything we need more right now than a nice little card in the mail from the friends that we cannot hug? I don't think so. So this timing is perfect. The kit does come with matching dies, and I wanted to show you that there are both positive dies like these that you can cut out and they are standalone, but there are also negative dies that you can cut into the front of a card or a tag or an envelope and have something showing through them. So this month's dies are super versatile and you get a little bit of everything. So I left the dies together so that I could cut myself a template to put the die cuts back into for stamping. And then I cut each shape out of label paper because one of the cool things about these stamps and dies is you can make stickers. So if you are trapped at home right now and all you can do is send cards or you have your kids at home being homeschooled and they need an activity, I think that making these little stickers would be super fun because they can mail their friends' cards too. Or if you're working on a journal about being stuck at home, <laughs> you can put these little stickers in your journal. And they're all really positive. It's all about rainbows and brighter days and just fun images. So I've never grown out of my love of stickers, which will be evident in this video. <laughs> so get yourself some sticker paper and use your stamps and dies to make stickers. So much fun. So I am putting all of the templates back in here and then lining up the stamps with my fabulous black Hero Arts Misty. I actually extensively cleaned my Misty for this video, so I hope you're feeling super loved right now because normally it's kind of a mess, but I like to put it through the Misty car wash, as I call it, about once a week and get it super fun and shiny. So I'm going to stamp this and I realize I forgot my snail. Oh my gosh, you can't have snail mail without a snail. So now I'm going to set my snail up. And even though I've already inked the stamps, and I'm just going to pick up the snail at the same time that I'm stamping the stamps, it's all fine. There are going to be a lot of mistakes that I make in this video. <laughs> and I'm leaving them all in because this is really what it's like. This is real life. So that's how it works. I need a reinker for my ink pad. But if you have the Misty, it doesn't matter if you need a reinker. So I'm ordering a reinker today, but in the meantime, I'm just going to stamp the images multiple times. And it's no problem. And they look perfect when I'm done. What's nice about the way the dies are spaced out is I can actually set the stamps up and none of them are touching each other. So it's kind of a perfect technique to just. I cut yourself a template and then set the stamps up and you know they're all going to fit. So now I have five fun little stickers and I will be using most of these on the project that I'm doing today. In the next part, I do not need the Misty. I will be using this fun rainbow image, which I have stamped and cut a mask out for. And it's covering up the address on my card. But I also took these fun cloud dies and I cut them out of Duralar. 
so that I can have an enduring mask to make clouds with. And then since the Duralar is translucent, I'm using the matte version here and I'll put a link below. But I didn't realize that I wasn't all the way to the edge on the right. So <laughs> you're about to see an uh-oh moment, but I will teach you how to recover from it. There's nothing we can't recover from. It's going to be okay. So the other die, I have the template here that I also cut out of Duralar so that you can do different shapes. And I think that that makes for more interesting, more organic looking clouds. I'll be using the Summer Sky ink cube and some life-changing blender brushes to create my cloudy background for this fun little rainbow. I'm a child of the 70s, so please give me all of the rainbow images that you have, to quote Nick Offerman. I can't have too many. Those and the little red and white mushrooms, just give me all those stamp images, okay? And no one will get hurt. I am keeping the ink deliberately light. This is actually a more intense blue ink pad, but I'm keeping it light because I want to make also some kind of stormy clouds to go with the rainbow image. So I want some lighter and some darker, and you'll see what I mean in just a minute when I double ink blend those clouds. Not every cloud will be white is the ultimate goal. Some of them will be very dark blue and it will look like a stormy sky. Now, when I take the mask off, I realize what I've done. What is that pointy cloud? Is it the end of the world? Oh my gosh, are aliens coming? No. And I can fix it. That's a great thing about ink blending. You'll never know that this happened except for the fact that I have documented it on a video and it will haunt me until the end of my days. But it's going to be okay and it's still going to be a super cute envelope. So on the right side of the envelope, I wanted to make the stormy part of this, the clouds appear. So I'm using both more pressure and I'm not wiping off as much ink as I was in the beginning because now the clouds on the right side of the envelope will actually be blue. They won't be white. And that will give you the overall picture of a stormy sky or an impending stormy sky, I guess. So I'm moving the mask around over the areas that already had ink blending on them and see how that creates both dark and light blue clouds and starts to look more realistic. I think this is a great way to do backgrounds. This is one of those things that I could do over and over and over again if I was at a retreat. I could just sit here and mindlessly make cloudy backgrounds forever and be perfectly happy to do it. This is an activity that would be good in front of the TV or during a Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> that you're on 20 times a week, maybe. But overall, that gives you like a nice organic sort of a sky that looks both stormy and hopeful because of the little rainbows and clouds that I will unmask and reveal in just a moment. Now, you do want the ink to go all the way up to the edge of the mask just so that it's nice and crisp when you reveal it. I keep these with the stamp set, the kits, etc. Because they're Duralara, they will last forever. So I will peel this off to reveal that this card is going to Aaron Leventhal at Hero Arts. This is a very challenging time. So I'm going to leave his address up here. This is the company address. So that if you feel motivated to send him a card, I think that would be great because it's really hard to keep the business going right now. So he could use all of our support and he could use some happy mail. Now the little sticker that I stamped with the sun, I'm just going to color and stick 
on the back of the envelope to use as a seal, which I think is the most fun use of the stickers that you can make with this set. So there's that little pair. So now I just have to make them a card. Now also this month, there's this amazing stencil and mask set. I have sprayed pixie spray on the back and these little X's tell me that that is the side of the stencil that does not have pixie spray on it. So that will be a this side up indication. But the pixie spray will help me keep the stencil in place while I'm ink blending the second envelope. Now, when I was in college, I used to make mail art all the time. I spent so much time on the envelope, 100% spent more time on the envelope than I did on the card. And it's so much fun when you get an envelope that's been decorated. So you're having fun even before you see the card. So I encourage you to use this kit to make your envelopes fun. So I'm using Butter Bar ink here and ink blending this fun image onto the card front and then removing the stencil and the mask. Now I, you just want to check where the flap is because I'm really good at stamping things upside down on envelopes and cards. So check where the flap is before you do your layout. I'm using the two stickers that I made from the kit to sort of enhance the address area of the card. So I'm going to position them in my Misty and then stamp the plane again so that I can get the little trailing rope that carries the banner. So just sort of figure out where I want the airplane and then stamp it and then I will color and put the stickers on top of that image to finish off the envelope. I like to think that when the people who work for the postal service see our happy little mail envelopes that it also sort of makes their day because they're out there just bringing us our happy mail, bringing us our Amazon packages. They need a little cheer too. So now that I have that stamped, and you can see why I'm doing it this way with the stickers, because if I just stamp the plane, then the sun rays would show through and that wouldn't really work. I'm doing very simple Copic coloring on the plane and I'm outlining white space with the Copic marker just to make the plane look shiny. This is just randomly placed. Don't worry about where the highlights are, but it really does make it look like a very shiny paint on the plane, and that's why I'm doing it. 100% random selection of where those highlights are. This is very simple, just one red marker, two cool gray, markers for the accents on the plane and very minimal shading. I'm not an expert Copic color and I find that simple coloring is just fine for my cards. I save all of my effort for watercolor. So I'll remove the backing on the airplane sticker and stick that down on top of the stamped image. Do you like my little teacup ring? I love this ring. I got it at a craft fair. I don't know how long ago, forever ago, but it just makes me happy every time I look at it. Even when I'm struggling to get my little die cut sticker in the right place, in public, on YouTube, in front of all of you. But I finally got it. So there it is. Then I will put the little banner that goes behind the plane on top of the tether and stick that down. And then because of the little border on the die, I'm using a pit pen just to continue that little banner so that it looks really seamless. Now in the kit, you get three metallic markers. So exciting, I love Korean markers. If you're in my Facebook group, you know that I'm completely insane about these. And I have a coupon code for them where you can get a discount. But I learned this fun trick from my friend Lori, where you just take a wet paintbrush 
and sort of flick it across the metallic markers or the regular brush markers. And because these are so inky, which is one of the reasons that I love them, you get a lot of ink flow on these markers. It makes the best splatters. So I'm creating a gold splattered background for another Happy Mail card. And I love this effect. This is actually black watercolor paper. It's not just black cardstock, so it can take a little bit more of the water that I'm putting down there. But look how shiny and shimmery that is. And then imagine doing a galaxy background or anything where you like those little shimmery splatters. Here's what I did with that card. I used this amazing mailbox die. And then here is the envelope for Aaron's card. And then here's the envelope that I haven't addressed yet. Head over to my blog for giveaways and more information and the coupon code. And thanks so much for watching.